buckle up. We're going to try and figure out how to get a logo that you've drawn in Illustrator into SketchUp in a way that you can use it as a push-pull tool, as a surface that you could then maybe use to engrave into a surface. Thanks, Lindsay. This is a trick. So let's go jump into it and see what we can find out. All right, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I am in Illustrator to start with. Let's say I want to make joy in big fat pink letters like this. And um, as you might imagine, before we could do anything with this, we're going to have to save, we're going to have to convert this to uh, outlines. So that's what the type looks like right now. If I go to my type and say convert to outlines, I get this. You see, it's like a nice big circle with only four points on it. It's got very few points. Um, something that SketchUp hates is curves. It's no good at that. So what I've done is I converted to type. I brought these pieces together. I think you know how to do most of this stuff. Like if I were to ungroup this thing and then grab individual elements of it and bring them together, then you could use the Shape Builder tool to smudge things together. Like that. And, you know, I made the J bigger and I got rid of the counter and the O and a whole bunch of things like that. Um, and as I say, Shape Builder tool is right here. You could say, bring these guys together. These guys. Make those one path. And it will get rid of the stuff that's in between. Kind of a cool thing. So I made a bunch of changes to that. But the other thing I did, I want to just show you this. Look at all of these buttons in here. All these little anchor points. Um, different than what you see here. Right? So what we see here is like four to get a, basically a circle. What I've got here is a bunch. And the way I did that is I selected this path. And then I went object, path, add anchor points. What that does is make those curves made up out of smaller anchor points, out of smaller segments, which SketchUp learns how to handle. So you will have to experiment with how many you need in order for something to look decent, but that's kind of the process of it. So now we're going to come back here. I'm going to get rid of this stuff and say, save this as. First, save it as an Illustrator file, because once you've done it, you want to save the file. And as you know, in Project 3, a .ai file is one of the things you want. But I'm also going to save as, here we go. Nope, it's not a save as. See, I told you it's going to forget how. It's an export function. Export me, export as, and here's where it gets fun. DWG, that's an, that's an AutoCAD file format. So joylogo.dwg. I'm going to export that. It says you've already got one of those. Are you sure you're going to replace it? I sure do. Um, most of these are fine. One inch equals one unit. As long as I'm working in feet and inches in SketchUp, those are okay. Uh, the rest of this stuff is all fine. Coolio. Now, let's go back to our friend SketchUp and get a new document. Lorva, hi. Um, what I want to do now is import that file that I just made, joylogo.dwg. And it comes up with all that, and you go, ah, right? Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. You may have to get in here and configure and make sure that your units is inches here as well. And then say, import me. And it says, oh, I don't know what any of that means. I don't need to. Close. And it says, plop. So here we are. It looks really promising, doesn't it? <laughs> That's what I thought, too. <laughs> Silly humans. So you see what I mean about the segments, that it's kind of chopped them up a little bit. They're not too bad. But what we have to do is explode this. What this has done is bring it in as one big fat unit, and you can't mess with it at all. Control click, explode. Control click, explode again. Two times. And then that outer bounding box disappears. Now what you've got is the lines are all there, but they're all individual segments. Look at this, that blue line there. You think it's a blue line. It's nothing. You can't see that. It just It's just a whole bunch of individual little bits. There's a simple, cool trick to turn this into a surface that we can mess with. Grab your rectangle tool and drag across pretty much any part of this. And make sure you go in this direction. I started, you notice, in the bottom right. I'm going right to left. 
doing. And it says, I can do that. I'm going to make all that work. Now I just get my eraser, get rid of the stuff that I don't want. You guys as well, thank you. You guys as well, thank you. And now what I've got is a surfaceable surface that I could do things to. Um, before I do much to it, I think what I might like to do is group it. So I'm going to select all. And so, for instance, if I wanted to right now with my push-pull tool, I could grab this and do that to it. Whoa! Do you feel the joy? Um, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is dig, dig that into a surface. So let's make a surface, first of all. We'll get up here where we can see what we're doing and make a little um, box maybe that big. And we'll get the push-pull tool and we'll raise it up three inches. Now I'm going to grab my joy down here, control click, and make this a group so that it doesn't get away on me. All right, so far, I hope you guys are following along. I'm going to raise that up the same three inches, move tool, M for move. Um, first, I want to orbit to a position where I can kind of see what I'm doing. M for move, raise that on the blue axis, on blue axis, three inches. Whoops, three feet. Raise three. It assumes inches, so I don't have to type inches. Now I'm going to move it again. You notice that it just hits that top surface and says, you must beam to be on this particular face. And I do, I do, I do. So I'm happy with that. And maybe I'll move it a little bit this way so it's there. So far, yes. Now what I've got is this attached to the surface, but remember, it's still a group. So i got to control click that explode me again. And now what I have is push pullable surfaces. Um, <laughs> I did up until that last step. So what did I do wrong right there that I no longer have push pullable surfaces? Let's grab that group again. Um, this is a push pullable surface. Of course it is. This ought to be, can I push pull that by itself? No, but I could earlier. Um, let's see, I think the trick that I had to do was to explode it. That should be a surface now. Control click, explode. There we go. It lights up as a surface. And now I can use push, pull, P, and dig that down into the surface of my goofy little box here. So I thought that was kind of a cool trick. It's a little bit of, a, of screwing around. If you wanted the counter to be in that, that O, the hole in the O, SketchUp doesn't understand compound paths. As you know from Illustrator, you would have to build that as a compound path. It's a hole inside. It's a donut, right? doesn't get it. So you have to bring that in as a separate element, reposition it, do a separate push-pull with that. So it's more of a trick. But hopefully that gives you a clear idea of how to create a logo in Illustrator, bring it into SketchUp, and make it work for you as an element. Have some fun. I look forward to seeing what you do with all this cool stuff. So long.